Uh, hi, Greg Perry here. We're down in the clock studio, the running room. I'm um, going to do a quick video about how to set a clock up and, and just some of the basic features that the, the homeowner, the clock owner should know about his clock, okay? Um, so when we're going to set a clock up, the first thing, the mechanism is that the dials attached to the mechanism. The mechanism sits on a board. It's called the seat board. Okay, and you can see a little bit here, this is the seat board for this contemporary movement. Never lift the clock by its dial, whether it's a white dial, a contemporary clock, or brass dial. You never lift the clock by its dial. Always grab it under the seat board and move it. Okay? If we hypothetically suppose this was a clock case, we take our movement on the seat board and we set it down. The next thing we do is we attach the pendulum. I'm going to go around the back and take the pendulum off. Or maybe we could pan around the back here. So we put the movement inside the clock case. So from up under the movement, we're gonna take this pendulum. So this is a rod. And we're in some tight quarters here, but. So we have the pendulum shaft or rod, and it's attached to a square. And the this round disc item is called a bob. And the bob is actually almost the center of gravity. For the, for the most part, it is the center of gravity for the pendulum. This is the timekeeper. Now this bob can go up and down the shaft of this square of the pendulum rod. And what it does is we have a controlling nut here called a rating nut. So I want everyone to, 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 to think, of, think about this. When, you, when you're setting your clock up in your house, if the clock is running, the clock is running too slow, we want to move this center of gravity higher up the rod by turning this rating nut to the right, okay? One total turn is approximately a an, an minute and 24 hours. So if your clock is running slow, you wanna move again this bob upward by turning this one full circumference. Or if your clock is running fast, you need to lower this and you have a threaded rod here, you turn it the other way, one full circumference, approximately one minute and 24 hours. You can get to the point where you're just giving it a slight nudge, just a slight nudge, and it could be dealing with, you know, 10 seconds or here and there in 24 hours, okay? And just take note that this pendulum bob is a disc, and it actually is meant that way to cut the air, cut through the air in your case. And always remember, even these uh, 18th century clocks were not great timekeepers, but a lot had to do with seasonal change. So in the winter, when the molecules and the, and the metals, and particularly the brass here, tighten up, the clock runs faster, and the, the air is, is lighter inside the clock case. In addition, in the summer, the air is heavier with humidity, and there's more molecules and moisture hitting this as it goes back and forth in the case. In addition, the metal swells up, so you have two things going on. And so you may have to compensate with your rating nut at the bottom from seasonal change. So again, we're talking about setting the clock up. We put it in the case as if there were a stand. We're going to take our pendulum, and bring it up here, and this is the crutch. And the crutch is attached to the escape wheel, okay? And that's beats, it's beating seconds here. So in this case, it's an open crutch with an open fork. We just put it in. This is a suspension spring. It's in the thousands. Some of them vary from this thousand to that thousand, but it's in the thousands. Just never, if you're moving a clock, setting it up, never kink this too far. If you kink it, it's gonna snap and break because it's hard and steel. And there's usually a, a slit coming off. This apparatus coming out that holds your pendulum and which seats in the little block on your suspension spring is called a cock. A cock is something that sticks or protrudes out of a clock movement or watch. So the cock is holding the suspension spring by the upper block. And now we're actually in the crutch. And you can move this side to side. Okay, so we're good there. Next, we're going to put the weights on. So put the movement down, get your uh, pendulum up, And this one is a quarter striker, so we just happen to have three weights. So what we want to do is make sure that you get the cable in the center of the pendulum wheel, or the, not the pendulum wheel, I'm sorry, in the pulley wheel, and <clears throat> get your weight and attach your weight. Right down. Untangle the weight. And in addition, what you want to do is make sure, uh, we talked about you can get for the homeowner, if you want to do this, again, do it only once in every six, five or six years. You will oil 
both sides of the axle of the pulley. So you put all three weights on. So movement placed in, pendulum, but let me backtrack a bit. Movement, pendulum. The pendulum tends to hold the movement in the case because at times with a dial like this, it's too front heavy. So what happens is you'll put the movement up there, you walk away, the whole, uh, whole mechanism will fall to the floor and it's over. So the pendulum is going to hold the mechanism there. What I would do next, and we'll do another video later on in a real clock case, but I've had a lot of requests for this. You pick your clock case or your hood, your hood rather, and you slide it on and you get the dial side to side aligned in your hood. If it has to be shimmed up right or left, you do that. So now we know where we want the clock mechanism, clock dial regards to the dial mask, and then we have our pendulum on. Hang your weights and you're off and running. So we talked about timing. The bottom of the pendulum is the rating nut. Only move your hands clockwise. Never go backward. Never go backward. When you're setting the time, you're only using the longer hand, which is the minute hand. If you can, this is a very robust hand. Some clocks, 17th century and 18th century, they're, they're, they're pierced, they're very fragile, they're very old. I like to see people hold the hand more down toward the center shaft, okay? And then you pull it like that. And to get to the time you want, you have to stop at the top. In this case, it's, it's going to strike every on the quarter hour. So we come down, we let it strike, we go back around. So we do this till we get to where the time is. It's showing 9.30 now, we want to get to midnight. We're going to have to go around two and a half times to get to midnight. But you have to stop every 15 minutes and let the clock strike. Or you wait till it's that time and you start the pendulum. So let's wait till 9.30 this evening and we'll get the pendulum started and that's another way. So it's less laborious, but you have to be around at that time to start it. Um, and, and just a quick word about the moon dial. To change the moon dial, uh, I've seen too many clients, they want to touch the moon dial to try and spin it. Only turn the moon dial clockwise, one tooth at a time, and here's full moon here, that's full moon. In the 18th century, late 17th century, when the moon dial originated, what it would tell the prospective owner in the home is when they saw that moon coming up around there, and the, the full moon will be right at the top. When they saw it coming around, they knew they had X amount of days that they could travel through the forest, through the hinterlands, and have enough moonlight on a non-rainy night or a non-cloudy night to go to, to church functions, to go to other various meetings around the, uh, around the county. Okay, so that's what the moon mile was invented for. There was alterations made to the moon wheel over the years for planting and for more toward maritime uh, applications for tides, so high tide, low tide, and it was adapted this by putting various gear configurations in. And the same down here with a, uh, this is your, unfortunately this calendar aperture has been soldered in. If it was working, you could put your hand under and turn the same sawtooth type affair to the right day or date, okay? But this one unfortunately has been soldered in, it's been deactivated many, many years ago. Okay, that's primer 101, uh, just for setting your clock up and taking it down. And the most important thing is, uh, we're running out of time here, but is to get your clock in beat. You, you want to level the case visually as you look across the room and say, wow, that looks great there. It's not too cockeyed. It's fairly level front to back, back to front. Don't put your clock on heavily carpeted floors, okay? And if you do, and it's a must, then you may want to screw or attach your clock case to the wall. And that's it from the clock shop. So hopefully these help, help, hints will help you in, uh, in setting up your own clock or disassembling. But uh, always work slow, never work fast, because there's too many items that you can break on these, uh, these timeless pieces. Thank you.